This video will show you the most crucial parts of a technique for snooker that will allow you to quickly become an above average player. This is Break From Life. Welcome back and if it's your first time watching one of our videos then it's fantastic to have you here. If you want to improve quickly at snooker then you're best strategically focusing on the things that are going to make the most difference. It's true of your game in general and of your technique you see. It's shots like these that everybody would love to be able to play consistently well but the fact is close control positional shots in a break like this can be far more crucial. You see, in a game of snooker, you and your opponent don't play at the same level all the time. This dynamic changes constantly, even inside a single frame. And it really doesn't take much of a swing in a key area to go from one player winning easily to consistently losing every frame. Your technique can play a huge part in this, how well it stands up to pressure, or how well it can cope with a new situation. Really, you're just looking to improve your chance of winning, because if we're honest with ourselves, you're never guaranteed to win a frame of snooker, but there are a number of elements that can have a dramatic effect on the result. How accurate you are, how good your touch is, as well as how consistently you're playing. Not forgetting the desperation level you feel at any one time, which can go both ways, and the difficulty of the shots you have to play. Looking to improve smaller amounts in the right areas certainly work for British cycling. But, can you employ similar tactics to help improve your snooker? Well, I think it can. Maybe more of a than you might first think. Disclaimer. Right from life, I'd like to apologise for making such a cheap joke targeting British cycling. Mostly because it has nothing to do with this video. Most people watch it won't understand it, and it's losing its views. But also partly because these were allegations for Team Sky, not British cycling. Thank you. You see, would you rather improve random areas of your game, or start off by improving the things that make the most difference? And that's what this video is about, improving the parts of your technique that have the most dramatic effect. Everybody wants to be able to cue the ball straight, but that's only one of three key parts you need for a good technique. Being able to cue the ball straight some of the time doesn't automatically guarantee you're going to trust yourself. To be able to trust your technique, you also need it to be balanced. And consistent. It needs to work exactly the same every time. So here's my seven most critical steps to improving your technique that will quickly allow you to become an above average player. This is only a basic guide, so click on the cards if you want to see more information on specific steps. Step 1. Hold the cue in a way that allows for the specific movement of your wrist. There's very little in snooker that makes as much of a difference to your technique as your wrist position. Ideally, you want your wrist at the right angle to give you this nice linear motion. The problem with this is it needs to be kept in exactly the right position to allow it to move in the straight line. It's incredibly easy for your wrist to rotate instead, and when it rotates like this, it sometimes feels exactly the same as if it was moving in the straight line. This can allow you to flick the cue out this way like this, or even flick it inwards in this direction and this can have catastrophic effects on the way you play the shot. Just find an angle that works for you and stick with it because if you mess this up it can literally destroy your entire game. Step 2. Get your entire body in the right position to be able to pop the ball. For example, if we're trying to pop this red, we're going to need to play the white directly along this line. So what angle do you think we need to have our cue at in order to pop this red in the simplest way possible? Well, obviously, it's pointing straight along the line as well. Now, if you position your bridge hand in the right place, you'll have this end of the cue on the line, but this end is still able to move, which will mean it can point across the line in any direction. So, to stop this from happening, what most players will do is rest the cue very gently against the side of their body here, and that keeps the cue on line as well as the entire cue arm pointing on the line of the shot. To 
To be able to get your body in exactly the right position, you need to know exactly where to stand, and in particular, where to put the foot that's underneath your cue hand. So, in order to do that, you need to imagine the line comes out across the floor. Once you start thinking about it like this, you can work out exactly where you need to put your foot relative to the line to get your body in exactly the right place to be able to play a shot absolutely straight. And if you want to know more about how to stand this snooker, try the video in the card right now and explain this in a lot more detail. How to stand in snooker is also on the Break From Life channel page along with a load of other videos that will help you dominate at the game. And while you're there, make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. Step three, make sure this entire side of your body doesn't get too tight and straight when you're playing the shot. And this is from your leg all the way up your arm. Make sure it's all bent outwards nicely in that direction so you've got a nice amount of space to play the shot because you'll find under pressure or in difficult situations, it will all start coming in straight if you're worried about things. So make sure that's nice and wide and it doesn't cramp the way you play the shot. Step four, do you ever notice just as you're about to play the shot that your bridge hand will just slide over a bit, it might jump up, or your thumb may just go like that a little bit, just at the moment you're about to strike the white. This is because your body realises you're going to miss the pop, so it decides to try and flip your cue this way or maybe that way in order to give yourself a chance of potting the ball. The problem is this can mask other issues you may have with your technique. So step four is to keep your bridge hand still at all times, even if this means you might miss the pot. Step five, keeping all your fingers on the cue as you play the shot. I've noticed when a lot of players play the game, they'll bring all these three fingers like this off the cue as they go to play the shot. And ideally you want them in contact with the cue at all times, otherwise it all gets a bit wobbly if you're just holding it purely with this bit. Other things I notice they do is even if you hold it tight, it's still bringing your fingertips away from the cue. And this means the cue starts to seesaw like this, which hopefully isn't making you too sick. Yeah. Ideally you want to use your fingers to keep the cue flatter. So when you play the shot, Ideally, you want your fingertips in contact with the cue at all times. Step six is actually one of the more critical steps in this entire video, and it's making sure you don't play the shot too quickly. Lots of people will tell you you need this little pause just before you play the shot to allow your muscles to relax, or so you're not trying to push the cue through as you're still pulling it back. While this is relevant, what's far more critical is what you're doing with your eyes at this stage. You see, when you're about to strike the cue ball, your eyes need to be focused in the right place or you could just strike the white in any direction. Watch my eyes here, focusing on the object ball and then looking away to see where the white's going. It took a small amount of time for my eyes to actually focus on where I'm playing the shot and if you don't give yourself this time, then you're going to be struggling to play the game of snooker. Step seven is to not move around on the shot. Because if before you play the shot, you're down on it, moving around like this, trying to find the right line to play the white on, then you're simply not going to learn how to play the game as fast as someone who just goes down on the line they've chosen and sticks to it and plays the shot. Even if this means to start off with, you're gonna be missing the pot you're still going to be able to very quickly work out over time exactly what you need to be able to do to pot the ball and pot it consistently as well as being able to quickly pick up the angles to similar shots It can also be difficult as well to stay still at the moment you're playing the shot, but this can be incredibly crucial and it's actually one of the few things you can focus on when you're down on the shot. However, this can be incredibly difficult when you're playing shots with a lot of power, difficult cueing, or potentially both. It's something that requires a lot of focus. 
because being balanced and consistent are critical parts of your technique. If you want to know more about a good snooker technique in detail, then have a look at the videos Cue Grip Technique and How to Stand in Snooker. They go through almost every detail of your stance and your technique. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.